Hello, and welcome to Your Choice 2022 general election coverage on Home TV. I'm Sydney Kenzer. Today we're here for a candidate interview with Alyssa Slotkin, Democratic candidate for Michigan's 7th Congressional District. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course. At this time, we'd like to give you the opportunity to briefly introduce yourself to our viewers. Sure. I'm Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin. I currently represent Michigan's 8th District, which is Ingham County, Livingston, and North Oakland County. Um, I'm running for this newly fangled 7th District, which is Ingham, Eaton, Clinton, Shiawassee counties, Livingston, and a little bit of Oakland. Um, I am a former CIA officer and Pentagon official. Um, I, uh, you know, came up in national security because of my experience of being in New York City on 9-11. Um, and uh, I did three tours uh, in Iraq alongside the military. My husband's 30 years in the army and I have two stepdaughters, um, both in service right now. So. We're service people, and, and I've just, it's been the best thing of my life to represent this district since 2019. Thank you. Each seventh district candidate will be asked a standard list of questions. For question one, please explain more how your educational and professional background make you an ideal candidate for Congress. Yeah, you know, I think what people don't understand all the time about national security and being at the CIA, being at the White House, being at the, at the Pentagon, is you know your your focus on the mission. So I worked alongside people for 15 years and have no idea how they vote. I have no idea what their political persuasion is because it literally was never relevant um, when you're focused on that mission of doing something in Baghdad, of doing something um, on protecting the homeland from attack. It just is irrelevant. And I think that training was something that was really important for me as I came to be a representative because um, that means if there are ideas that are good from the other side of the aisle, I, I look at the idea on its merits, not as a political kind of game to be played. So I, I hope that that's good training. It's a very independently minded uh, district. Mid-Michigan is really a swingy part of the state and I'm an independently minded candidate. So I think that that's a good thing. Um, and then I think just putting the country above anything else, that's, that is um, for me, I think something that, that is missing sometimes in Congress is just remembering why you're there. And coming from a service background, you never forget why you're doing what you're doing. I, I, it is something that is central for me in being a representative is putting the country above all else. Thank you. Please tell us about the communities and people of the 7th District and how you plan to meet their needs. Sure. So the 7th District is a, a little bit different than the 8th District. Lansing is at the heart of it, um, Lansing and East Lansing, and then it's all the counties, largely rural counties around it. Um, so you have both issues that affect um, an urban community of 100,000, but then really small towns. Um, I think there's no way around getting around the importance of economic security in a district like this and focusing on getting more jobs here and jobs of dignity here um, that have good benefits, good pay, that a family can live off of. So I focus a lot on economic security and attracting jobs to this area. Supply chains, making sure we can always make the next generation of cars and that we don't depend on other places like China for all of our supply chains, which has been exposed during COVID. Um, bringing down the price of healthcare and prescription drugs. This one is extremely personal to me um, because my mom, she died in 2011 from ovarian cancer and she did not have health insurance when she was diagnosed. Um, I wouldn't wish that experience on my worst enemy and um, the price of healthcare and prescription drug drugs is just way, way too high. So I constantly work on those issues. Um, we've been able to make some progress lately. Um, and um, then just uh, for me, it's also being available, being out and about, doing town halls, but also having a top rated congressional services office here in the Lansing area, right? You can call us if you're dealing with federal government problems, social security, the VA, uh, immigration issues. We are um, really kind of ninjas at fighting through the bureaucratics at a, the federal government level. Um, to help people who need that help with the federal government. The next several questions will cover prominent issues throughout the state. Please comment on Proposal 22-3 and share your thoughts on the current and future governing of abortion in Michigan. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting because before Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court, 
I really didn't get the question on abortion very often. I can probably count on one hand how many times it came up in my previous elections. Um, but when they overturned what has been our law for the last 50 years, it shot right to the top of people's minds. And it now is brought up to me everywhere I go. Um, uh, for me, I am pro-choice. Um, I believe in a woman's right to make her own decisions. Um, and if Roe hadn't been overturned, I, I think I would have just been happy to go on as we were as we were living. Um, but it did get overturned, and we have a 1931 law on the books here in Michigan that bans all abortions. Um, so I am a supporter of Proposition 3 uh, because I want to codify Roe, and I don't want to ban. And in particular, you know, we always talk about those horrible cases when a woman is raped or when she's been the victim of incest. But I think what often is left out of the conversation is the one in four women in this country who have a miscarriage. And we all either had one or know someone who had one where you're getting the worst news of your life, you know, devastating news that you're, you're, this baby that you want isn't going to be able to survive. And so many women for their own health so that they can go on to have kids get a DNC, a procedure that is performed by a doctor but would be outlawed in our state. Um, so I try to bring the human part of it back into the conversation, but I am a supporter of Proposition 3 and I do not support a ban on all abortions. Please speak on the state's teacher shortage and your plans, if any, to address it. We have a teacher shortage. We have a shortage of nurses. We have a shortage of mental health professionals. We have a shortage of police and we have a shortage of firefighters, first responders as well. Basically, all the frontline jobs that keep our society running, right? Where we literally can't keep our communities going unless we have these positions. Um, so I think we should be doing um, here in the state what we do in the military when we really need certain career fields. It's exactly what my husband did at West Point Military Academy and my stepdaughter did at West Point. Um, for those frontline jobs, I think you should uh, be able to go to school for free for those jobs, um, but then sign a continuing service agreement that says you will get your free education, but then you owe the state of Michigan at least five years of service when you're done. If you go through school and you're a teacher, then you need to teach in our schools for at least five years. Um, if you don't, if you decide to leave the state and go somewhere else, you'd have to pay some of that back for sure. But I think you, you do what the military does, which is really incentivize the professions you need by giving them um, a free education as long as they sign a continuing service agreement. So I've been talking about that with state officials since that would be a state program. Share your thoughts on any plans for school safety throughout the state. Yeah, so I am the representative currently of Oxford, Michigan. So we had a school shooting on November 30th of last year. It was all over the news. Um, and I would not wish um, uh, a school shooting on my worst enemy. I mean, it's a horrible experience and traumatizing for that community. Um, number one, we need money for school safety. It just, it does take money to provide physical safety. Um, uh, you need to make sure that you have um, some sort of liaison program with a sheriff's department, with a local police force, so that there are folks who are around and available to respond if there's some sort of violent threat. Um, but then we also need a like soup to nuts review of our mental health system. You know, in Oxford, they had three counselors for 1,800 students. There's no possible way that you can meet the needs with that few counselors. Um, we don't have enough beds in this state for folks who are having real sort of mental health issues. So I think, you know, we have a once in a generation opportunity to deal with mental health. Um, I also am a supporter of reasonable, responsible gun ownership. Um, and we know that right now, gun violence is the leading cause of death for young people under 21. That's insane. So you either wanna deal with that leading cause of death or you don't. You either take that face value and try to do something about it or you don't. And for me, I am a supporter of responsible gun ownership so that you can have a weapon. I grew up with guns. I carried a Glock and an M4 in a war zone in three tours in Iraq. Um, but you also have certain expectations that you go through background checks, no one mentally ill gets a gun. I am a strong supporter that no one um, under 21 needs a weapon unless it is for hunting along with their family. Um, so uh, there are some reasonable things that we could do if we decided we wanted to take on that leading cause of death for kids. 
Share your thoughts on Michigan's current infrastructure and any improvements you'd like to make. Well, um, look, we all know that we needed major, major investment in our infrastructure. You know, we, besides our roads, obviously, we had a dam collapse in, Mil in uh, Midland during um, COVID. We, we have structural problems with bridges. And then we have new I, things around infrastructure, broadband internet, right? That wasn't a thing my parents worried about, but you better believe every community in the state needs broadband internet and that's infrastructure. So last year in November, I voted in support of a pretty landmark piece of infrastructure legislation. And that's gonna bring in a ton of money to the state of Michigan um, to invest in our infrastructure. And one of the things I've been trying to say um, to the governor's team and to, to folks in Lansing is, um, is that, you know, yes, there's bridges, there's roads, but broadband internet needs to be considered part of that. And if done right, we have the ability with this amount of, of money to make sure we have broadband internet in every corner of Michigan, including the UP, which I think we all know that we need. What is your attitude towards fiscal responsibility in the state government? Yeah, I'm probably, um, you know, I'm a Democrat, but I probably fall much more towards that fiscally responsible um, uh, part of the spectrum. Um, and, you know, just like a family's budget, um, you got to be able to cover your expenses if you're going to spend on something new. Um, and I think that um, uh, um, for me, being able to articulate how we cover our, our national budget is um, it is an important thing to do. And it's why, for instance, um, when we just passed a prescription drug bill back in August of this year, um, we made sure that we covered the costs. And one of the ways that we did that was by um, telling the top 150 companies in the country, the ones that make over a billion dollars a year in revenue, that they have to pay some taxes, right? They have to pay 15% taxes. Companies like Amazon and Facebook basically pay no tax, even though they make a billion in revenue or more. So you have to explain how you're gonna pay for things. And, and um, I think that that involves making sure our wealthiest corporations, a billion dollars in revenue and more, actually pay their fair share. How do you plan to address an economic instability and inflation within the state? Yeah, so we all know every single person I know, or certainly every single family I know, is dealing with inflation and trying to adjust their lifestyle because of inflation. It is causing real pain. Underlying inflation is the price of gas. It's not as high as it was, but it's still higher than it should be. Um, and you know that watermelon at the grocery store is more expensive because you had to drive a truck to drop it off, right? And that costs, uh, that's gas. Um, so um, for me, I've tried to attack the underlying cost of that's what's driving, helping to drive up inflation, which is gas. So I have been the sponsor of the bill to suspend the federal gas tax. That would take about 19 cents off each gallon of gas. Not perfect, but it's something. Um, I have been pushing the president to again open up the strategic national reserves of, of uh, gas so that we can get more supply on the market and then push to be more aggressive on our diplomacy with countries like Saudi Arabia, other Gulf states that have a lot of oil that could be coming onto the market. Um, and then speeding up the process of doing, um, uh, you know, our leases here in the United States. So getting at that and then trying to take costs off people's books, right? If people's costs are going up, how do you like attack those costs that are adding up? And this is where we passed prescription drug legislation. Um, and that to me was monumental, especially for our seniors who are really feeling the pinch. They're on fixed in income cap the price of uh, insulin at $35 a vial starting in January, capping the price that seniors pay for prescription drugs at $2,000 a year, and finally allowing Medicare to negotiate prices in bulk, which they'd been prohibited to do. So that's what we're trying to do is take costs off the books of people. Please address the preservation of Michigan's natural resources. Yeah, I mean, we're the, we're the water state, right? I mean, it's part of our identity. Everyone I know, it's the most bipartisan issue I work on is um, both our waters and our water, right? Our drinking water and our Great Lakes, um, our local watersheds. Um, so I, I feel like there's a really strong push in this state to preserve what we have. Um, and I'm, I'm just a big believer in um, 
in taking pains to protect our local environment. Um, we've had some problems in my current district with drinking water issues, most recently from contaminating the Huron River. Um, and I've been pushing the state to have more accountability and more penalties for companies that repeatedly um, pollute the environment. But then also general conservation, right? I mean, conservation is something that's important to the most strident environmentalists, but also to our hunters, our anglers. My husband and I are big anglers. Um, so just promoting a bunch of legislation that allows us to preserve and conserve our, national, our natural environment. Please address Michigan's opioid usage and the statewide presence of fentanyl. Yeah, well, obviously, I, th I think most people at this point either know someone or know someone who knows someone who has uh, become an addict, you know, who has got real substance abuse issues, um, maybe sometimes combined with mental health issues. So it certainly has affected most people in some way that I know. Um, and I think um, you need to do a couple of things. First of all, we have seriously shut down some of those um, uh, frequent flyer doctors who have just prescribed opioids um, way too generously that, that we know got people addicted after their dentist appointment, after a small surgery. Um, but then also making sure we have enough law enforcement to actually go after some of the serial abusers and the drug dealers in our state. Um, this is why it's so important that we have more police officers um, and those police um, uh, offices are funded properly. Um, we also need to do more to make sure it's not being smuggled into this country. I've done a lot of border security bills that are aimed at stopping not just um, uh, you know, potential threats in terms of a person, but also those chains and those channels by which drugs are coming over northern and southern border. Um, and then, to be honest, we're the only state in the country where you can't sue a drug company when they put out destructive or defective drugs. The one state left in the country. And we need to repeal that law. That's something that's extremely important so that our attorney general, whoever's the attorney general, can properly go after companies that produce these opioids for getting so many people addicted. How do you believe the district in the state of Michigan should approach new or continued diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts? Yeah, I mean, look, I think uh, I come from a tradition of working at the CIA and working alongside the military. Um, diversity is strength. When you have people from all different corners of the country, from all different experiences, it makes your military stronger, it makes your intelligence community stronger. So my approach is that's a positive thing. Um, and I think there's been a lot of politicizing of diversity issues in the past few years, turning it into a culture war, maybe even playing on racism issues, which I just don't support. Um, we should all want to talk about the importance of diversity and we should all be willing to talk about the problems that we've had in our country in our history. Um, so I, I, what I don't support is politicizing and turning issues um, that really don't have a, a ton of traction into political issues. Critical race theory is the one that I've seen where I don't, I literally didn't know what that term meant two years ago. I think I had to Google it. And suddenly it was being brought up at every school board meeting. It was being brought up all over the place by people who were activists on this issue, who realized that they could stoke fear and concern about what was being taught in our schools. Um, we have not one school in the state of Michigan, K through 12, that's teaching critical race theory, but somehow it became this culture war issue. And I just think it's really, um, uh, doesn't demonstrate leadership to harp on cultural issues that don't have real grassroots interest and support. We've reached our final question. Please provide a closing statement sharing your goals for your district and state. So for me, you know, I think my closing statement would be that in a place like mid-Michigan, I know that we still believe that government should work for as broad a group of people as possible that we want leaders who have integrity, even if we don't always agree with them, um, and that we want our country to work um, and to be moving in the path of progress, not pulling ourselves backwards. Um, and I think at the end of the day, um, while people may have their one issue that they decide their vote on, in general, people want principled leadership. 
and I hope that in the short time I've been the representative here, I have demonstrated that. It's important to me. Um, I would rather uh, not win an election than do something that violates my principles, and I will continue to lead um, uh, in that way uh, if I'm reelected in November. Thank you so much for joining of us. Of course. And thank you for tuning in to this candidate interview with Alyssa Slotkin, Democratic candidate for Michigan's 7th Congressional District. I'm Sydney Kenzer, inviting you to watch live election night coverage on home TV on Tuesday, November 8th.